Hello and welcome back to the Ten Point Podcast. We're here with me, Lucas Normal, and Beefham. Yes, lad. And today we have very special guest, professional footballer Hope Akpan. How are you, mate? I'm good. I'm good. good. Nice to be here. Happy to be here. Uh, thanks very much for coming on. So we normally get started off with, um, what was your first like memory of football? First memories of football are uh, Liverpool, actually. Yeah, Liverpool on TV. Robbie Fowler, and Michael Owen. I think yeah. it was an FA Cup game with Man United. That was the first ever game I remember in my head. Um, and then just fell in love with it from there. Yeah. Um, my dad used to have a, a news agent, Picton Road. And like when there was no customers in the shop, I'd like wrap a ball out of newspaper and yeah. be kicking it around the shop. <laughs> that was like my thing, do you know what yeah. I mean? Um, breaking stuff in the house. <laughs> and um, just grew from there. Just loved the game, man. Loved it. Loved the players, Michael Owen, all. Even, even the United players, even though I was from Liverpool, anyone yeah. who's on TV. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. you're a Liverpool yeah. fan growing up then? I was a Liverpool fan, yeah. yeah. Big Liverpool fan growing up. Um, yeah, Steam Jarrard, Mike, Michael Owen, yeah. Bobby Fowl, I loved them all. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's where it all started. Yeah. Literally, yeah. yeah. And didn't you join Evan at the age of eight? Yeah, so joined them early on. Um, so as I said, I was playing in my dad's shop. Yeah. And a um, few few people used to come to the shop, your son's always kicking the ball about, do you want him to come and play yeah. for the, the local team just in Botanic Park? And obviously went down there, played a few games, joined their team. I, was, I literally didn't play long, like six months maybe playing for the Sunday League team. I remember one night we were playing a game and um, a scout come down, I didn't know, this is in hindsight, Yeah. came to watch a kid for the other team called Lucas Dawson. But um, I think I scored two goals, played really well. Um, was flying, used to call me Twinkle Toes, the striker. <laughs> um, and got picked up, Sid Benson. He's picked up loads. I think he's like well-known scout in Liverpool. Just said, um, you look lively. Do you want to come and go for the trial for Everton? At the time, I didn't understand what he meant because I was just used to playing Sunday League or in school. He said, do you want to come and get a trial in Netherton? I was like, Where, where's Netherton? Didn't know where it was. <laughs> But um, he sorted out transport, got me down there. Um, obviously joined in the session and literally one session signed. He was like, we want to sign you. I want you to join yeah. the academy. Literally quick. And then that was that then, signed. And then obviously built up through the, through the academy over the years, yeah. What sort of players within Everton's academy at the same time as you? Um, Everton's academy, same time as me. Um, well, the well, well-known ones, my age, Jack yeah. Rodwell. Yeah, uh, Jose Baxter, Adam Forshaw, they were all there from the beginning, from, from mm-hmm. young Callum McManaman. Yeah. yeah. So, like, we had a good, good play, like a good little crop. But um, as we got older, our age group, there weren't that many players. Jack Rodwell was in our age, but he didn't really play with us. He was always older. Mm-hmm. Like, ours was just full of, like, not You tell he was, like, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like, with Jack, it was like one summer he came back and he was like a man. He just, just <laughs> body was just like for, at that age he was just more developed and all of a sudden he had like a left foot could play both ways could do it could do turns off both feet so i think he cracked it early on about like doing extra stuff away from the academy mm. so he was just miles ahead um our team my age it was only me callum callum McManaman, danny redmond might, might not know him, but we went on to play professionally yeah yeah they weren't too many from our age. we were like like a hot like a tough team yeah. We weren't really the, the most skillful team. Yeah. The team below us, they were more skillful. That was Adam Forshaw, Jose, uh, John Nolan, James Wallace. They had a, like a really good team, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but we were just grafters. Yeah. <laughs> That's what everyone wants. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, as we, as we um, got to like through the years, like 14s, 15s, um, that was what we were, our age was known for. We were just tough. I had a manager or a coach called Sean London. He was just like a, like a scouse fella, like <laughs> on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Join in and like bully us a little bit, but it toughened us up. Yeah. And um, our team was like dead hard to beat. We'd go to the other academy teams like Man United, Liverpool, and we'd always give everyone a good game. We'd always like at the right end of the league. Yeah. yeah. But um, we just grafted together. We were like a good, solid team unit, like a good, good fun, good years. You yeah. know what I mean? Were you always a central midfielder? No, I said I was a striker as, yeah. a, as a young kid. 
Um, but I don't know. I think I lost my pace early. <laughs> <laughs> lost my pace. Um, so there was a little period where I dropped to centre back, and then there was a coach at Everton, Gary Ablett, yeah, like yeah. well known, proper, and like the, one of the best coaches I've ever had, just for giving you confidence and advice. Yeah. And he sort of said, "You're a centre mid. You like you need to play in centre mid. You've got composure." You've got, you're gonna have the physique. I couldn't see at the time. But he was like, "You're gonna have the physique." Yeah. Um, just play the anchor role in centre mid and see how you go. I was about fourteen, and then from then on, I sort of sort of stayed centre mid all the way through my career. Really. Yeah. Did you have um, much dealings with David Moyes at Everton? Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> obviously, went through the academy. We were at Netherton to begin with um, in um, Bootle, but then when I just started YTS, yeah. we moved over to Finch Farm. Yeah. Our first year, like proper scholarship, we moved over. So we had more access to the first team then. Obviously, we were still on our side and they were on the other side. Oh, they were separate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was like the same build. Oh, yeah, they were separate before that. Yeah. All the academy stuff was at Netherton. Mm. Do you reckon it's better being sort of in the same building so you can sort of see the trajectory where you want to go? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You can, you've got an idea of where you want to get to. You can see it. It's yeah. more visual. You see the players. You feel part of it a bit more. But um, at Netherton, it was like old school. It was like old shelters, cabins. Like the food was like beans on, like it was proper old school. <laughs> but it was good. It was good fun. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was our thing. It was ours. So that was good as well. But going over to Finch Farm, obviously the, the facilities and being able to see the first team was inspiring. So yeah, it yeah. was important. But um, when we shall, uh, obviously went through the youth team, um, signed professionally for Everton. And... Um, yeah, Moyes was the manager and Everton had a good team. Like, I don't know, when I was like 18, 19, the first team was Cahill, Arteta, Saha. So like really, in relative terms of the Premier League, that's the best Everton team for the last what? Yeah. It's yeah. The best Everton team recently, you know, in recent yeah. years. Would you agree or? Yeah, probably was. In terms of the league position. In terms yeah. of the league yeah. position. Yeah. yeah. Sixth consistent. Exactly. Really in European football most Very years. Very close really. to yeah. Champions League one mm. year. I think we got beat by... Villarreal. Villarreal, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so strong team. Cahill, Arteta, Fellaini, Yakubu, um, Saha. Yeah. Like, good, good, good team. Um, and Moisey was the manager and he was the commanding figure, Moisey, like, mm. a lot of presence, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> I, I don't know what it was about him. He just had that presence. Yeah. And he used because he'd been at Everton for so long, he was just... The main, the main man. Everyone yeah, respected yeah. him. Do you know what I mean? No one would mess about. Um, Did you ever see him lose his shit? Um, all the time. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I was on the bench a few times in the first team and travelled away to some games and he was like dominant, man. Honestly. <laughs> like he'd be in the gym and he'd be on the treadmill just like puff, 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 <laughs> just staring at pace for like an hour. Just staring in one place. The gym would clear out. Do you know what I mean? When he was in. <laughs> He was that type of figure. But um, he was a good coach, though. Very detailed. Um, obviously, as you know, Everton was always hard to beat. He'd always yeah. set the teams up, like, a bit defensive, but they were so organised. Yeah. And um, he built a good team, built a solid team. Um, as I've come through to sort of 18, 19, playing reserve football, played a few games, spoke to him a few times. He, he liked me. But um, at that stage, I wasn't really ready for the first team. Mm -hmm. Looking back in hindsight, in, in sort of like in what way, like physically or just, just, just the level. Like yeah. when I look back, the level was so high. Mm. Like going from academy reserves, first team, you join in, especially the first few times I join in the session, I'd be like, "Fucking, this is a new language." The pace quicker. The pace, just the thought process, decision making. Mm. Um, just the level was so high. But over time, you sort of adapt and sort of gravitate to it. And obviously, playing in a few games, playing Europa League, um, that dead rubber game where a lot of Against the academy players. Against Saint Bart, yeah, yeah Bart, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, good experience. But he said to me, like, as he was sort of letting me go. So I've had a meeting with him, Alan Stubbs, um, Taff. They were like the reserve coaches, mm. and he's gone. Um, I like your hope, you know, you've, you've grown, you, you, I can see your potential. Um, but I just think you need to find your feet, maybe go somewhere else, lower leagues, and, you know, find find your level, you know, get, gain some experience. 
And then he sort of like shook his head and was like, oh, but I think you've got potential. I think, you know, I'm thinking of giving you another year and seeing how, and I'm sitting there like, give me another yeah. year, like, yeah. <laughs> but then he goes, oh no, I think it's best if you go out and find your feet. And to be honest, it, it, it was a tough blow, but um, it really sort of made me the player I was, to be fair. Yeah. Bounced back really well and, and found my feet in the game from then on. So what, so what sort of what happened next then, like after Everton, like after you've moved? Then you go Hull on loan. I went Hull on loan, so that yeah. was more to sort of get a contract after Everton, yeah. Yeah. more to the end of the season. So I played in the Championship, had a few good games, but again, it was the same sort of conversation. It was like, I think you need more experience for yeah. to come into my team, because I think it was Nigel Pearson. He wanted someone to be ready to play mm -hmm. 30 yeah. games yeah. the next season. And he was like, I like you, you've got unbelievable potential, but... I just thought I need someone with a bit more experience, which is fair enough. So I ended up going down to uh, Crawley Town. Yeah, I've got, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I noticed yeah. on, on your debut, you yeah. got a goal and got sent off yeah, in the same standard. game. That sums up my career. That <laughs> <one>. <laughs> um, so I, I think it was, we played Wimbledon, which was like a local rivalry. So it was like intense. Mm. I mean, Crawley only used to get crowds of like 1,000, 2,000, but it was like, compact little stadium you could hear every word from the, from yeah, the fan yeah so it was quite intense and um obviously scored on my debut and um just got two yellows silly yellows <laughs> man got too excited one was a bad <laughs> tackle and one was like a handball or something yeah. stupid. but and um, that just got my career going that, like, yeah. what's it like being sent off you feel like you've let everyone down or are you just like why we just done that yeah yeah well, you got it, quite a few of crawley didn't you send them off yeah i did <laughs> in my young years i was over it over exuberant <laughs> and I was leggy, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, one of my favourite players was Patrick Vieira, growing yeah. up, Steven Gerrard. So, I loved putting put my foot in. Yeah. That was how I set my sort of tone for the game. But, um, yeah, there was a period where I got like four reds in a couple of months. <laughs> yeah. And I'm getting a bit of a reputation, and refs at that level couldn't wait to like book me or send me off. They, like, they were waiting for it. Yeah, I think it was 31 games, you got four red cards. Is that what it was, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. got banned. I think it was like, yeah, three game ban then it was like alright you've had two red cards it's a five game ban <laughs> it was like three seven I was like you know, I'm missing loads of games here yeah. but yeah just just young and, and, and just enjoying the game I used to as I say our team growing up Everton yeah put your foot in like even our even our training games like me James Wallace Jose yeah. you just scouts that like, <laughs> the tackles we throw in like, heavy do you know what I mean and I just took that into professional football and I thought, how can I impose myself? That's what I need to do. And yeah. I used to do, but I used to get a bit carried away in those days. That's good, sure. especially in them leagues, though. Yeah, you had to. Because yeah. people say, like, they, like, they go down to, like, maybe League One from, like, Premier League. Yeah. And, like, you just can't act the physical side. Yeah, of it. yeah, yeah. Especially them days, like, when you're young and you've been at an academy, you're wrapped in a bit of a bubble. Yeah. Um, you have tippy tappy football. You know, you're playing with good players all the time, and then you go to a lower league team, and it's just like some, the balls over your head, you've got to chase second balls. And I didn't get it at first. I think we had, we had a manager, Steve Evans. Yeah. Scottish fella. Like, like big fella. Big fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big fella. <laughs> You get all sweaty and team talks <laughs> in your face. I see the one who win when the team scores at Wembley is kept staff. Yeah, yeah. 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 very yeah. funny, Matt. Like funny, and I respect him because he, you know, he signed me and and whatnot. But um, he was like, oh, mate, mad. So obviously, I think one of one of my first games where I realised it's different. So I think we were playing. I think it was a pre-season, first pre-season at that club. We were in Portugal. And um, get, getting the ball off the back plays, spraying the ball, like just keeping the ball. Got the ball, played the pass, come past, jogged on. He's like, hey, you. And his Scottish accent, you know what I mean? He's like, do that again, you'll be sat next to me. I'm like, <laughs> I've just kept the, what are you on about? I'm you, I'm about. I've just kept the ball. He went, get on the second balls, get up there. <laughs> so it's a, it's a lot of that, those low leagues, and you have to adapt quite fast. Yeah. Like corners, big heavy fellas, you know. The fighting for three points, it's totally different to yeah. academy football. It's yeah. like life and death, and you have to adapt quite qu quite quickly. But because of those years in the reserves, uh, Alan Stubbs, Andy Holden, Sean London, those sort of fellas who who have played the game and they weren't afraid in training to like leave and on your own, yeah, yeah. tell you every day, reinforce that, you know, it's it's hard being a professional, but it's not it's not rosy. You've got to 
you know, roll with the punches and put your foot in. Yeah. So I had a little bit of that and then just had to work and I sort of got it quite early, which yeah. was lucky. You won promotion at um, Crawley, so what was that like? Yeah, it was good. Um, obviously went there and didn't know much about Crawley Town. Yeah. Um, it was just like hit by Gatwick. Yeah, or like miles away from home which was good for me though to be yeah, fair yeah because i got away from liverpool liverpool's a bit heavy in, on the football like you know it's like everyone sort of everyone knows everyone everyone, say knows that, everyone. Yeah. um you know, we end up going out and whatnot so it was good to just get completely away from it totally new place out your comfort zone a little bit and just see what you made of a little bit and then um, we done really well that season and um, crawley had just got promoted to that league but they signed like a whole new team yeah so good players for that level so got promoted at Cancer really that that season. Um, he left Steve Evans just before the season ended. Steve Coppel came in and sort of closed out the season and got promoted to League One. I mean, get yeah, to League One and then obviously signed again there. Yeah. Started the next season. Why did League he leave one. if he got promoted? He's a character, Steve Evans, <laughs> um, and he um, he knows how to sort of work the circuit of of football, low league football. So I think yeah. he had his eye on another job. <laughs> <laughs> and he um he done well and it was a better fit for him I think yeah so he he sort of like weighed it up and he got off yeah yeah he so, sort of coming so after Crawley you moved to Redden was there any other offers as well as Redden yeah so I had a really good season um League One I think before Christmas I'd scored like seven goals from the field um was like playing top four and playing really well and that it was January. The January window and I knew I was going to move like the manager had said like this club's watching I'd spoke to Crystal Palace uh, Aston Villa um, but then we played Redden in an FA Cup game um, at, at Crawley and I had, a, I had a solid game like played really well we got beat but we were probably the better team yeah and um, I think I had like the most tackles the most passes most interceptions in the game and um, I think a few days later I come home to Liverpool and I'm in bed and I'm thinking oh, I'm going to have to start getting ready to go back to Crawley and I used to hate that drive because it's like four hours or whatever yeah. and um, the manager went oh stay at home and I thought Fuck, does he know like I've been out or something yeah. what's happened <laughs> he's like don't come into training I'm like what's going on he's like oh we've had an offer from Redden um, you're going to go down there I think tomorrow and, and sign for Redden I was like am I yeah <laughs> Do you look at any say in that? Yeah, you get a say. Yeah. But um, they wanted like they wanted the yeah. to, the money, obviously. Do you know how much it was for? Yeah. Transfer to Redden? About five hundred grand in the end. Yeah. 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 So yeah. for Croy, that's that was a good, yeah, a good, lot of money. good bit of business. So they um they wanted to accelerate, they wanted to yeah. make sure it happened. But I think it was it was good for both parties, of course. You know what what I mean? manager was it who took you to Redden then? So it was Brian McDermott at Redden. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Premier League at the time, to be fair. So it was quite a quick left Everton eighteen months and then was back in the Premier mm. League. So it was like yeah. a quick sh bounce back, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've got wrote down here. You got two assists against Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I made debut at St James's Park. I got a fluky assist there. <laughs> if you watch the video, you'll see what I mean. I think um, obviously I've come on. We were losing one 0 <laughs> Got it back to 1 1. Um, Newcastle, a good team. It was like Kabai, yeah. Denver Bar, Cissé, Pardew. Yeah, yeah. But they were going through a tough time. So they've gone 1 0 up. Kabai's put like a free kick, unbelievable free kick top in. I've come on then about 60 minutes. Got it back to 1 1. And um, <laughs> players building up on the left hand side. Balls come across the box. It's been headed out. I'm thinking, oh my God, Premier League debut. It's coming to me on the half volley. I'm running up to him thinking, I'm like, this is it. I'm like, this is my moment. I run up and in my head, I'm going, Gerard, like in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to run up to him. If you ever see this on, on whatever, you'll, you'll, you'll laugh your head off. So I run up, I'm like, Gerard, going to catch on the half volley. Absolutely miss hit it. <laughs> Nearly fell over. But it's like spun off to... Um, Adam LaFondra and he's whipped it in the bottom bit. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll celebrate we win the game 2 1. But um yeah, that was the first game. And then um same again, we're losing at Chelsea 2 0 at home this time, the very next game. And I've come off the bench again. Um got a pass, set up the first goal. And Chelsea was like Lampard, like 
Juan Mata, um, Oscar. Hazard? No, not Hazard, not oh. yet, not yet. Um, I like playing against them. Like Lampard in midfield. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're intimidated. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like, it's like people you've grew up watching, you know what yeah. I mean? And you know, he'd, he'd scored in that game, so you know yeah. he's still top level. Yeah. And like, they've got a presence. Like, I don't know if you, you get close to some players, but you see them on TV, you don't think too much of them. But mm. when you get, you know, shoulder to shoulder, you think, fucking hell, he's a big lad, isn't he? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I've set one up again for Alf Adam Lafondra. And then again, last minute, last kick of the game, set another one up to get it back to 2 2. So I'm thinking, fucking hell, it's Premier League. Like, <laughs> easy this. I had a little highlight on match of the day. Um, good, good, good times. And, um, yeah, that's where, that's another great part, like, really enjoyable part of my, my career, yeah. Yeah, it must be. It must just be like who's the best. Like Matt playing against them players. Who's the best player you've ever played against? Ever played against? So what's mad? The actual best players. Um, I used to think anyway, but Evan when I was a kid. Obviously, I weren't as developed or yeah, yeah. wasn't as um, had as much experience. So he could play around me a little bit. I'd just be chasing them like a like a rabbit. But <laughs> um, Arteta, PNR. Yeah, PNR could beat you without touching the ball. He just like a little yeah. faints. He just let it run across. These are things I've never seen before. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? So Arteta, PNR were probably the best. But um, I played against um, I think it was Arsenal, the Emirates, and I remember Santi Carzola. Yeah, yeah he, both footed man. Oh, yeah, he was only about that big. <laughs> he was like four foot, but like he just couldn't. You couldn't get any, like you physically. You're trying your hardest. Yeah. And you just can't get near. He's popping it off. He's croifing you. He's going back to croifing again. Yeah. Just couldn't get near him. So he was one. He's one of them players, isn't he? That no one sort of mentions anymore. Santi Cazorla. Yeah. Then I'm you sure, look back I'm on him. Sure, a lot. Sure, he nearly had to get like his leg. Like, I'm yeah, 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 sure. We had that. He had that bad of an injury, but then he's yeah. back playing at Villarreal like a year later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, he was a serious. He's corners both feet. He was a serious player, you know. Yeah. Um, who else? One matter. I'd say, I'd say Santi got that just that game because yeah. they fucking spanked us as well. <laughs> like I remember, <laughs> I remember that at Reading, and um, he was just getting popped. I think it was four 0 at the time. Yeah. And I remember Arsenal Wenger saying to Arsenal, "I want you to play one touch." <laughs> like that's that's how bad it got. So they were just playing one touch, <laughs> like one touch, once, and they like created like a chance for. I was like. <laughs> What's going on here? This is this is too much, yeah. man. So yeah, they, that he, he uh, just for that game and that experience, he was probably Man the best. in that team. No, no, he oh. he left. It was Walcott, Ramsey, yeah. Ozil. Yeah, that that time. Yeah. So top top players. Like, what's it like being like four 0 down somewhere? Like like there, do you just like do you give up in a way and not give up? But it's tough, man. And the pitch seems massive. Yeah, that all the other players get faster, get more confidence. <laughs> You get like in your shells. It's hard going, but as I say, I, I was just a player. You just tried to nail someone if it got got to that got to that point. Yeah, probably try and get sent off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bet you bet you agree for the button on the bet. Well, I don't know. You can get in trouble. No, you can't get in trouble now. But a lot of me mates used to be onto that. Yeah, not that I'd speak to them or anything, but. They'd always say, "Oh, lad, I had this on you for the early yellow." There. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was one <laughs> yeah. for a booking, man. Yeah. Just the way I played. I was just always on the edge. get for a booking? Some managers did. Some, and I used to hate it because I'm like, I'm playing this way for the team. Like, yeah, I'm not yeah. doing it for myself. Sometimes it was like a selfless yellow yeah, on yeah. the counter-attack and you want to stop stop the attack. Mm. And then you come and look at your pace up and be like, fine for a yellow yeah. card. But I'm no, like, how much are we talking? A couple of hundred or like grands? No, no, no. It wouldn't be grands. It would be... Yeah, a couple hundred quid. That's, that's still yeah, it's still it, it's 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 heavy. Like I remember getting a red card one time. It was at Blackburn, and um, I think we were playing Sheffield Wednesday. And I'd scored in the last minute to equalise. Is this when you pushed the ref? <laughs> 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 I it weren't a push. You what? <laughs> I argue this day it weren't a push, but um, I've scored thinking it a legit legit goal, and he's pulled it for handball. And I've run like. 40 yards, everyone's protesting. And I'm just running, running, like me. And I'm like, and I get to the ref and he walks towards me and I'm like, 
I put my hands out and he must have ended up on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> and he's done this stumbling back. <laughs> And then I saw something change in his eyes. I'm like, oh no, he's gonna do me. Yeah. <laughs> I still thought nothing, nothing of it. And then he just pulled out a red card. But I think it was more to deflect on the controversy of the last minute goal. Yeah, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Was it never a handball? No, never. It hit me chest. It, it was like a quick deflection. But yeah, it hit me chest. And um, we were fighting for our lives to stay in the league that year. So like, it was, it was emotional. You know, I fought just save the team there like potentially yeah a uh, big game for us I'm just all flipped in in a, in a few seconds end up having a big fa discipline dis disciplinary because i pushed the ref but you were kind of on my side but they were like listen we still have to do something because it looks bad do you know what i mean yeah what ban did you get for that then so i got a four game ban and i think i got two weeks Two weeks' wages as well. Is that from the top. club, the wages? From the club, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. harsh, that, when you've scored, like, a oh, legitimate yeah. equaliser. It, it, messed, it messed with me a little bit, you know, because I was... Obviously, I'm trying my hardest for the team. And then mm. to, get, to get a ban, I think we playing United the next game in the cup. So I missed that. And then to then get a fine on top. Yeah. I think they, they knocked it down to, like, one week. But still, it's heavy. the ref would just sort of second, like, ah, like... You know what I mean? Like it, it's not like you went nah, and just put up a push. The ref doubled down, mate. He the ref like, dived. <laughs> <laughs> you got a yellow card. Was like, oh, he's on the floor. <laughs> but um, I think it was just yeah, one of them things. When I look back and I couldn't, I, I don't regret it because I couldn't, have, I couldn't, I couldn't have physically. I was just in the in the heat of the moment. Yeah. And um, I think he just he was a bit of play acting on his behalf, as I said, to sort yeah. of deflect from having to actually make the right decision. Mm. And um, yeah, that was a bit of a, a tricky one still. Who was some of like the best characters you met in football then? Loads, loads, like yeah. A few funny managers over the years. Um I say Steve Evans was was mental, mate, honestly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> say big lad, weren't he? And we had we had a we had a game. Um I think I think we played Fleetwood away. Long journey from, from Crawley, it's like six six and a half hours, like the other end of the country. And we've gone there and we got beat 6 0. And we were top of the we were up in the league. They were they were weren't anywhere, but I don't know what happened. We just got beat 6 0. And um, the the assistants or one of the, the ladies who coordinates everything had ordered like fish and chips for the lads for the, the bus. Mm. Obviously she didn't know what the score was gonna be. So um, we've got on the bus and there's all this fish and chips at the back. But Steve Evans like, no one touched the chip no fish and chips. Nobody I dare anyone to touch them. <laughs> so obviously you've got this six hour journey back. Lads are getting a bit, a bit hungry, like <laughs> the chips are smelling nice on the back. Yeah. <laughs> then you start seeing a few of the lads rustling through the chips and start sharing a few of the boxes out. <laughs> and halfway through the journey, Evans gets on the mic at the front. He's like, listen, lads, fucking, I hold my hands up. We made a few mistakes. Got a big game on Tuesday. Let's get back to Crawley and you know, we'll train tomorrow. Let's dust ourselves off to so forget about it. There's chips on the back. For <laughs> everybody took in. There's enough for everybody. So I was like, yes, here we go. Start sharing out all the chips. Obviously, some of them have gone because the lads have been diving in. So, obviously, it works from the back to the front, handing them out. Get to the front. All the stuff I've got is not for the stuff. The players have already half dived in. So, he, he's like, Wait, wait, you can just see like commotion at the front from the back. All the lads fucking giggling away. He stops the coach. Coach starts pulling over to the hard shoulder on the M6. <laughs> Gets on the mic again. He's like, lads, we're not moving until I get my chips. Like, where, where's the chips for the staff? <laughs> Obviously, the lads are like, no one's saying nothing. But, like, we were on the hard shoulder for like 45 minutes. I was trying <laughs> to figure out who was going to own up to eating the chips. So the captain ended up having to say like, listen, I think some of the lads... Chip. He was like, he was like, how dare you guys? How dare you? <laughs> right, that's it. He's in tomorrow. Train eight, and we're gonna leave. We're not leaving till four. <laughs> so I mean, that journey back, like everyone was silent, no one making no noise. But all the lads are just chucking <laughs> the chips, mate. So he was mad. Um, Owen Coyle, another manager of Blackburn, was just. <sighs> I don't know, as a manager, he, I think he let us down as a team. I don't think he was, from comparing him to other managers that I've had, yeah. I think his, his level and his atten attention to detail let us down at that level, championship level. Yeah, yeah. But as a character, he's funny as fuck, man. 
mm. honestly, always joining in training. Um, always like he was having it. He was a striker when he had a good career. Yeah. So he played for Rangers. Yeah, he played for Rangers. Yeah. So he was always talking about how good he was at football. <laughs> yeah, joining yeah. in. He was like old and stiff, but he could still like it's a volley. It's <laughs> like so he'd, he'd always just want to do like cro- like cro- finishing. He'd always just want to do finishing so we could join in. <laughs> but he had an unbelievable volley on him. So we had the ball coming here, go. <laughs> volley and put it in the bottom bin put it in the stanch but we just never do training we never train we just do heads and volleys so we could join in everyone's boss of finishing oh let me unbelievable finishing but we couldn't we didn't know what formation we were playing at the weekend do you know what I mean we were playing I think we, we were playing United in that cup game that I mentioned before and like we were trying to do tactics because all season we just struggled with like our formation we were playing 4-4-2 and all the lads were like we need to play a different formation we need to be more solid so we finally like got quite solid and picked up a few results. It was like, all right, like I had like a two hour meeting where he wasn't in there. We just called it on ourselves. I think it was around Christmas. He was like having Christmas dinner. We're having like <laughs> on the video trying to analyze like how can we get better, lads? Like we need to do that. We were in there for two hours. He comes on the, the voice machine at Blackburn, like, lads, the turkey's getting cold, you need to I'm like, you're the manager. Like <laughs> you should be doing this. But we done it, got a few results. Started like working up the league a little bit. And then we had that cup game against United. And we're doing eleven v eleven, like tactics for the game. And it's going a bit pear shaped, like the lads are not agreeing, we want to be a bit more defensive. He's like, no, we just need to get at them. So halfway through he's like, scrap it, scrap it. I'm not doing none of that. We're playing United. We just see how it goes. We go there, if we turn up, we turn up. If we don't, we don't. <laughs> That's nuts, Dash. <laughs> what a mentality to have as a manager. <laughs> the lads are looking like, like, what's going on here? But we had a good team. Like, we should never have been in the position we were at, at that club. We had some, like Danny Gray and Ben Mark, like, top good players for that level. Did you end up going down? Yeah, we ended up going down, but... but went back up the season Went back after. up the season after. So, Tony Mowbray came in at the end of that season. He was, like, top draw yeah. manager. And we picked up some points, but just didn't quite make it. But um, I knew he was going to build a, build a team. But I sort of wanted to stay in the championship, looking back. Yeah. So I left to go to Burton, but they bounced back up. They had, the team was too good. Yeah. Well, during this time, i seen that you had four, was it four caps in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what was that like playing for, like, obviously a country? Unbelievable, unbelievable. Like, especially for my family. Mm. My mum and dad are Nigerian. Mm. Been back over there a few times. So it was a big honour. Yeah. I've got a lot of fa- family there who were... Um, you know, always like watching my career, always messaging me. So to play for the national team was mental, like big, big honor, and like one of the best time, best experiences of my life, really. Um, again, they had some players, man, like John Obi McKell, Ahmed Musa, um, some really like top quality players, uh, Igalo, yeah, uh, Jude. Um, so that was an experience, and it's a different style. It's a different like different flavour of football but it's football at the end of the day do you know what yeah. I mean but the fans like oh my god like you turn up at the airport and there's thousands of fans <laughs> waiting for yeah. you it might be five in the morning beating the drums playing music like it's fucking electric like yeah who did you what? play against so we played World Cup qualifiers so we played against um oh, who was it? Who was it? another another African team Zambia Congo different teams um but like going to all them different countries, like the atmosphere, I can't explain to you. Like, obviously you play them big stadiums in England, 60,000, mm. but like you're kind of used to that roar and that crowd. Over there, it's like, it's so intense. Yeah. Like even just the national anthem, after you've, oh, the fans are screaming, ah, like it's, it's like electrifying, like proper. And the football's a bit different. It's like, you get that, um, happy about like skills and good play, uh-huh. you know what I mean? So that's worth more than a goal sometimes. <laughs> so you do a bit of good skill and all of us celebrating like a goal, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, nah, good experience, like unbelievable. But as you, you said, characters, like football's full of characters, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like in all honesty, being a football, you're allowed to be like a kid for longer, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're always yeah. in that dressing room mentality always playing um you know pranks on each other mm. all that sort of carry on do you know what i mean so there's loads of characters man loads, yeah. Yeah. loads. 
Like, did you move to Finland after they beat in Bradford? Yeah, yeah. How, so how does that sort of come about? So obviously I played, I played um, at Bradford. For, I mean Blackburn for three years, Burton for a year. Speaking of characters, Nigel Clough character, Jesus Christ. Um, Is he top, Burton manager? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Top were you, top man. Were you there the year he got to the semis of the League Cup? Got beat by City. I think I'd left the season before. Oh, actually, I think yeah. oh, it was the season before me. Yeah. Um, yeah, but top, good club, Burton, like smaller club. Yeah. But like, at that time, it was like it was an experience because it was like dead tight knit. It was only a few members of staff. It wasn't like Blackburn where you got loads of people behind the scenes or Redden or Everton. It was like dead tight knit. And Cluffy like controlled the club. It was like Moisey. Yeah. Like he was, it was mad, mate. He was like the man. Like he'd be at training, like all the staff, and he'd have his top off. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Bare chest. Again, I don't know what it was about, but he loved volleys again. Like before <laughs> training. And Cluffy was a ball. Like he was played good level. Do you know what I mean? Played for Liverpool. Yeah. So he just do cross and he'd love the volley, mate. If you if you look, there's some pictures of him like before games, and he'd be out on the pitch like him and the coaching staff just <laughs> <laughs> volleys into the goals, mate. But um, he used to bring his dog to the to the games. His dog would run around the dressing room like before the game. <laughs> That's yeah. mad. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of lads who like trying to get in the team would like show loads of attention to the dog because he knew <laughs> the dog. You know what I mean? Like, oh, come here, oh, like, Cluffy was like, oh yeah. Shut him off the dog. <laughs> like, get them in the team, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But um, he was a character. He could go off Cluffy, man. Jesus. I, I had it with Cluffy a few times. Um, early on, I wasn't really... I was in and out the team. I signed there to play, like, be one of the main players. And um, for whatever reason, just wasn't playing. And I was about to go on loan to Portsmouth, and he sort of blocked it. So I was like, why, why have you blocked? Like, why have you done that? I'm not playing here. Let me go. Um, we had like a, a standoff in um, the dressing room. It just it just happened. I'd walked in, he was on his own. I hadn't been playing for ages, and I was like, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to ash it out now because we'd have conversations, but it was all it would always be like political, like around the training ground, and you'd never really get a clear cut answer. Sort to get hold of a manager. Just sometimes, to have, like, sometimes. have a conversation. Yeah, then. yeah. Because obviously everyone's there, and that. Yeah, yeah. And you're not you're trying not to upset things too much, but you want to get your point across. Mm. But I'd had, you know, I'd, I'd, I hadn't played for weeks, and I was like, "What's going?" On? I've had a loan opportunity, and you blocked it. So I sort of come in the dressing room. He was coming out. I've just sort of so like cornered him, not let him pass me. <laughs> I'm like, "What's going on?" He's like, um, "He's like, what do you want to do?" I'm like, "I want to play," and we were struggling. I was like, "I think I'm I'm better." Like I'm watching the games, and went, what, what kind of dog shit? Like, <laughs> let me play. I said, "Give me two games, see where I'm at." And if I'm if I'm as bad as everyone else, then I won't, I won't say a word. You don't have to play me again. And from that point on, I think I played every game that to the end of the season, and um, done really well. We were like, I think we got to the last game. Obviously, we were beaten in the championship. We were always gonna sort yeah. of struggle, but we put up a good fight. I think we went down to the wire last game, and um, I think we were playing Preston away. All we need to do was better Bolton's result, and um, losing one nil. But they go down to 10 men. I score about 70 minutes. 1-1. One, one, staying up. Bolton are getting beat. So I'm like, fucking hell, it's right, we're staying up. But then we, we should have just gone for the win. Like, we sort of played it cautious. Like, we don't want to get beat. They're getting beat. Just just keep it cautious. Yeah. We're staying up. Everything's rosy. And then it got to, like, 85 minutes. And we're hearing that Dave scored, equalised. Who's telling you that? That you just heard it from the fans? Just from, I don't know how it spreads, but you just hear it. I think they had a radio on or whatever on mm. the side. And they said, they've equalised, but it's 85 minutes. Just still keep it like 1-1. One, one. I'm thinking in my head, if we just score, it doesn't matter what happens, we, we stay yeah. up. And then we've heard Dave brought it back, 2-1. So then we have fucking gung ho, everyone's getting <laughs> forward. We end up losing the game fucking 2-1 because everyone was just in the box, you know what I mean? Trying to score, so we end up going down the last day. But um, Cluffy was a Cluffy was a character. Um, and then I went to Bradford. Um, spent two years there, and then towards the end of the second season, it was COVID. Yeah. So the season stopped in March. And um, they were like, um, they let a lot of players go. 
Because at that level, we'll pay quite well for that level. Yeah, they've got a big club, aren't they? Big the club, massive, yeah, yeah, grounds massive. Um, they expect loads. It's like a, At the time, it was like a hard place to be at because yeah. the fans were just... They, they had this expectation that they were a championship Premier League club. Yeah. So, like, if it was nil-nil at half-time, where you went... Because they were, they were play teams in League Two, like, I don't know. don't want to disrespect anyone, but, like, Forest Green. Yeah. Those type of teams were in that league. So when we play them and not be winning by two or three goals, they'd be like, what's going on? Fucking hell. The atmosphere would turn sour quick. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was a tough place to play sometimes. But then when it was when you were doing well, you had 18,000. So it was like the best place. Yeah, yeah. So it was like a cast 22 at Bradford. But um, we went into lockdown, didn't play, obviously, all that summer. I had a few offers, again, like down south and different places, but... Not really jumped out to me, I was just staying fit. Mm. And then um, I had a coach that I knew out there in Finland, and he was like, listen, we've got an opportunity for you. Do you fancy it? I didn't really have much much else on at the time. So I thought, why not? Went out there. And um, it was just, it was difficult. It was just so different. Like, obviously no one's in the top about, league. Top league yeah. over there. It was a good level. Like, it surprised me. The level was good. Mm. But there was just so much cultural differences. Was the language barrier language very hard? barrier was, was mental. Do you speak Finnish? Do you have their own language or? Yeah, they speak Finnish, yeah. yeah. But Finnish is like Chinese. It's like... <laughs> Did you pick up on any of it? No, mate. No, no. <laughs> Try and Most of their well. players from there as well. Most of them. There's quite a few foreign lads, like <laughs> randomly. They'd be loads of South Americans. Yeah. But mainly Finnish. And um, the, the hardest thing for me was, it was, it was winter. It was like minus 20 degrees. Mm. So you couldn't play outside for like the whole winter. Yeah. So they'd have official games indoors in like a dome on astro so psychologically yeah, mentally just, i just I, could, I didn't adapt i couldn't adapt to it was the fans there inside no, no. no. sometimes he was but it was like <laughs> it, was, it was mad mate it was like so that's weird though yeah. it was like sometimes you play in like massive halls like i just couldn't adapt to it yeah, yeah. but where did he sort it in the league that team they were all right they were expected they to called? get sjk sjk yeah. yeah yeah they were expected to finish in the Euro europa league places yeah um and they ended up finishing in, in the Europa League. What's places. that like thirds, is it in that league or something? So or you have to finish in the top half and then yeah. it's like a sort of playoff. Yeah. I think all the top three get a playoff to finish see who finishes first. Yeah. The top three get get European football, I think, mm. or top two. So we um, we actually finished in the, I think they got into the conference league that season. Yeah. But um I just found it super hard to adapt, mate. Yeah. How long were you actually there for? Just I was there for like seven or eight months. Yeah. But like I found it tough. I had a little girl at the time. And it just changed my mood on football. Like, I wasn't enjoying it. You're out there by yourself? It's, uh, sometimes out there with my missus and, and the baby in, like, a small apartment. Didn't know anyone. It's freezing all the yeah. time. Mm. Snow. That sounds grim, like. Is it dead dark? Um, it's the opposite. So, like... It's always light. It's always light. Yeah, yeah. So it was just strange. Um, I tried, tried, but just didn't it that well. Um, and I sort of fell out of love with the game a little bit, like, because mm. it was always light. I, I was always on, it was an like amazing golf course by where <laughs> by where the team was. So I'd be on the golf course at like, one in the morning because <laughs> it's still light, do you know what I mean? Is it hard to sleep in there? Yeah, you need the blackout curtains or you just had no chance. Yeah, Not yeah, that. yeah, it's mad. But um, yeah, so I just called it a day, I think around August and, and just came back before the season finished, really. Just had a mutual understanding. It's like, I'm not enjoying this at all. I just want to get back home and come back home, yeah. So you're a witness now, aren't you? No. <laughs> no I'll tell you what's up here. I've got a few mates in, in the football world, obviously. So wherever they go, coaches or players, they just register my name just in case I, I want to kick about or yeah. want to get fit. But I haven't, I haven't played for well, well over a year now, to be honest. Um, just Do you think you'll ever get back into it? I haven't like officially retired or anything. Yeah, but um, I don't know. Like I've been watching the World Cup a lot. I stopped watching football a little bit. Mm. Just, just into different things. Just I was. I'm one of them people. I can, I can only focus on one thing. Yeah. So if I'm trying to do something else, I can't really dibble and dabble. Yeah. I can't give half of myself and be somewhere else. So I did try. I went to. I was at Macclesfield this season actually because they're trying to have a push go. League. Robbie yeah. Savage is there, like yeah, it's a good yeah. setup, good players for that level. They're going to piss the next three leagues or whatever and get like five promotions or whatever. And I was there, but I just couldn't, 
I couldn't juggle both what I'm doing now and what they wanted a lot of commitment. Is that part time or is it full time? It's part time, but it's it's like daytime, so it's kind of full time. They wanted full time commitment, really. Yeah. For that level, and I just couldn't commit to both. Do you know what I mean? I found my mind was elsewhere. Do you is that like the same? Le- is that like step seven? So in the same league as Boodle Bucks. Yeah, Boodle beat them, didn't he? Yeah, two one the other week. Did they? I haven't got a clue. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it's quite a few levels down. Like yeah. But they sh- I don't know, they should be pissing the league, right? I think it's sort of the same model as like Salford, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Done. They're doing it the right way. They're doing it properly. They've got good coaches. Mm. Uh, Sav- Robbie Savage is there. He's always in the raffing. He picks the team. He says he's like mm. the owner, but he's fucking... He's right, I've seen the documentary on it. Yeah. <laughs> Did he have a, um, like a Astro Turf pitch? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. Astro. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's all right. But again, I just mentally just wasn't... wasn't Really there, do you know what yeah. I mean? So I'm not the person to just hang around just for the sake of it. Yeah. I'm either there or I'm not. Do you know what I mean? My mind was just elsewhere. Yeah. You know? What was your favourite ever football moment you've had in your career? Favourite ever football moment? It's probably um, it's probably playing back at Goodison for Redden. Um, because it was quite quick, and obviously, like yeah. you leave Everton, uh, I still had a lot of mates there. And um, you'd hear things about what coaches would say, and yeah, and they were like, "Fucking hell, Hope's, Hope's got a good move there." And he did it, those things, and then to go there and sort of prove myself that like I can't be at that level was like massive for me. You know, you've been there your whole life, you get rejected a little bit, you're down in the dumps. You have to like build yourself up. You have to do it yourself. You don't. There's no one else who's going to help you. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's either you do it or you, you fall by the wayside. Mm. So to get back there after eighteen months play Goodison full crowd like all my family there all my mates there mm. that was like it was significant for me personally do you know what I mean yeah. it was like a, and it was still like the same players at Evan it was the Fellaini's the Baines so like Jagielka so it was nice to like see them and yeah. them see me if you know what I mean mm. yeah, yeah no, that was good so, so what what happened next and obviously you've got your business yeah yeah so yeah I've got a business in um, South Manchester called Plant Boost um, it's like a health eatery so we specialise in superfoods and just healthy food, juices, smoothies, a few um, food pieces as well. Um, just from football, like you've always been into nutrition, always trying to like be at your peak. And I used to find, I, you've asked any of like people who played with me, I always had mad supplements and different things that I'd always try to like try and get the edge. Yeah. Because as a football, I was all, I always struggled with injuries and like stiffness. Like I always had stiff joints. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I always used to think, what's going on? Why why do I have this these things? And I always used to research and find different things that would try and help. But it was really bad. Like even so even going back to like Sunday League, I'd play in games as kids, like ten. I'd play the game. And then all the kids would be running around after the game playing heads and bees, and I'd be sitting there, my legs would be sore and that <laughs> sort of So I've always had these little issues. So I always studied like all these different um superfoods and, and herbs and stuff to try and help with inflammation and different things so i've just implemented that into the into the business and into the the eatery well I'll just say your best scran is our best scran <laughs> yeah. so um oh, there's a few different ones so the popular ones are the acai bowls and um, if you go to america or if you go abroad like barley um those sort of uh, beach plate you see them loads everywhere it's like um it's like a smoothie in a bowl, a bit yeah. thicker, with a bit of granola, fruit toppings, so dead healthy, yeah. but like really nice, got like a chocolate taste, really yeah. nice. And we do like a banging avocado toast, cracked pepper, tomatoes, yeah. really nice, mate, yeah. Sounds up your ostries, so that's oh, good. Oh, that's good. Oh, you need to come along, man, get, get on the right path, man. <laughs> but um, that's really good, uh, where we are, we've got some exciting things coming for next year. How did you have the idea, though? Did you, like, like, how did it just come to you to do that? So, it was, do you know what? It was the first lockdown. It was me and my missus, and obviously I was always making smoothies and juices at home. Mm. She was like, these are really nice. Let's look into it a bit deeper. And we were going to do, like, a little juice bar in Liverpool. But um, we just thought, let's just try, like, a like a delivery type thing and put it on Instagram, see see how it goes. And we just used to get orders all the time. Like, people say, oh, I can have five on Monday, can have ten on Friday. Mm. Uh, loads of people used to, like, obviously, I knew quite a few people, so... I started that way and then loads of people just get in contact with us. Tony Bell, you was like a regular customer. He, they put it on the stories and it just spread from there. So you were like, fucking hell, people love these bowls. Like, yeah. used to be, <laughs> used, to, used to be mad. We used to be in the kitchen with like, oh, 
hundred of hundred hundred two hundred of them all on the table, and we mm. have to get them out delivered. I had mates, <laughs> cousins delivering yeah. them all. Out. We were just delivering everywhere, like north side, south yeah. side, just getting it out there. We realised we had a bit of a buzz. So then when I went to Finland and it went working, I started thinking, all right, let me just think if we can do something here. So me and me, me, my partner um, just dug our heels and found the location um, and just went for it. And it's been good so far, man. Surprises, yeah. Well, what's yeah. the Instagram um, after uh, anyone the, um, watching? That is the plant boost. We get, yeah. Do you know what? We get scouts all the time. Because like, we start in Liverpool, yeah. they all travel down there. It's like a little day trip to come down and yeah. have that side balls, get a lot of footy players in. Yeah. So we not name dropping any, but we had fucking gigs and Nicky Button coffees and juices in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Curtis Jones comes in a lot. Yeah. Um, a lot of the Man United boys, Scott McTominay. I don't know why it's all Liverpool and Man U. It's yeah. never any Everton boys. <laughs> I don't need to get onto them. Our ah, players don't like healthy scans. Yeah. Ah, yeah. in <laughs> <laughs> Michael Keane's probably in the Burger King. Is really <laughs> <laughs> it's not really song, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, really, it's not the yeah, Everton. It's more the little, like, we get the Brazilian Liverpool boys in a lot because yeah. Acai is, is Brazilian. Yeah. They're right. We get ours imported directly from the Amazon. Yeah. So, over there, it's like, it's like staples, like fish and chips. How did you organise, like, that to come from the Amazon? Just contacts, you do your research, find out. We, we got lucky a bit in terms of um, our supplier, um, got in contact and she's actually a grandmother. She lives in the Amazon. So we've got like a direct link to like the product, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Debbie. <My partner. laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, we get it in. It's like the highest grade. So other places can't like, but the, the best in the UK, easy for like yeah. our quality. And um yeah, it's good. It's big things coming. It's heavy stateside. You go to America, all these spots are everywhere. They tend to then like sort of come a few years later. Dr drift don't over. Yeah. So that's the whole idea. We just want to be ahead of the wave. But we've got some exciting stuff coming next year. And um, we want to come back to Liverpool. So we're just trying to figure that out and find locations. Trying to struggle, struggling where to where we fit in in, in yeah. Liverpool. But we'll figure that out and, and we'll, we'll come here. Yeah. yeah. Do you like meal preps for people? Well, no, we do juice juice cleansers. Yeah. We do juice cleansers. Don't do meal. We don't do a lot of food. It's more wet produce. Mm. So in the summertime, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but we've got we just got to we got just ride out the winter and then next year we've got some really exciting stuff coming, man. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Going back to your football yeah. career, um, if you have to pick a five a side team of players mm. you've played with, yeah. who would you have in it? Players I played with. In Owen Coyle up front. <laughs> Owen and Coyle. <laughs> Owen Coyle and Nigel Clough for the volleys. <laughs> <laughs> Best heads and bees. You're not gonna play heads and bees. You're not, you're not winning against them, I tell you. Um, in goal, I'd probably go. Who would I go with? Go with Alex McCarthy. Is that Redden? Redden, yeah. Yeah, he plays Premier England, League. He? Played for England. Yeah. Just a cat, mate, like lanky, about seven foot, but like just silky. Everything was easy, like, we weren't even trying, and he'd pull off, yeah, worldies all day, like smoking ciggies and gold. <laughs> cat. Um, at the back, who did I go with? Played with, yeah, probably go. It's gonna be heavy, Evan. Cause yeah, it, just that level was so high. So I'd go, I'd go Jaggy Alka if I was gonna go at the back. Is Lescott there as well? Lescott was there. Yeah, it's a proper nice, nice fella. I know him now. Speak to him now, now and again now. Yeah. Real, real nice fella, Joe Lescott. Yeah. Um, but I go Jags. Just had a bit of everything. Could play. Mm. Is he still playing now? Stoke. Stoke? Yeah, I think he is. Yeah. Forty, I think. Yeah. yeah. Model pro. So I go, I go Jags. I go. Bainsey. Yeah, yeah, solid choice. Just baller. Just like should have left really. I know I know it's great that he did stay, but for him, I think yeah. he should, he should, he should, say if he left and went to Arsenal. When when, when should, would he have left though? I think United I think around yeah. the time Moyes went to United. They came in for him twice. And he didn't go. No, no I think he he chose to stay. Just scouser Bainsey though, you know, like he just he's Indian he. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. You see him with all like Alex Turner. <laughs> 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 he would literally be perfect for this podcast, baby. I know. Going into that, then tunes and that. Yeah. Don't yeah. forget that. Because he ties out. in with your music. <laughs> yeah. and, and Bainesy was chilled, mate. Like, yeah. nicest fella. Um, 
but baller. Him and, there was a period down the left, him and Pena. Oh, yeah, unbelievable. Like, I don't watch much of Everton as much these days. I don't yeah. believe you. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> shit. Much but as <laughs> Everton fans, how do you compare? Because I was obviously very close at that time. Mm. I always compare it to now. I think the whole club's I got a different feel. <coughs> no. Like, it, I don't know what it was then. I don't know if it's because they're better at marketing and that. We were speaking about this the other day. Better at marketing then or now? They were better marketing the team now because we were much better then. Yeah. We wouldn't sell out. But now we sell out every weekend. Is it? not good. It's weird. Do you know what I mean? I think the dynamics of football have shifted a little bit. Yeah, and social media, media plays into it as well. Massive, like, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just, I, I don't know, with me, with me now, like, I'm still a season ticker holder. Yeah, yeah. Where'd you sit? Um, lower buns, yeah, 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 posts yeah. everywhere in front of me. <laughs> but I've sat there for too I've long. Now. View. <laughs> Wait, I never used to make it. I remember my first ever game. I went with like one of the fellas from my dad's shop. He was like a mad Everton fan. He took me to like Bradford v Everton. I got the bus down there. I'm like mad. And I got there and I couldn't see nothing. <laughs> 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 But um, yeah, what were we saying? Yeah, so, yeah, so like the season tickets, they've went up in price again, which by the way, for anyone watching, is an absolute disgrace. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it went up ten percent last year, yeah, and it's went up ten yeah. percent this year. Even yeah. though on half of them, it's more than ten percent. It's a ten percent average. The same. Wow. Like, cost of cost living crisis as well. Yeah, the team aren't much better either. But that, I, like, I don't, do you know what? I'll end up not in for fifteen minutes. But mm-hmm. looking back on the team, then like players like Baines, Jagielka. Pina, like you felt like you had a bit of hope. Like back then, I don't know, it's because of kids, I was thinking, oh, we, we have a chance yeah, of doing something yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Whereas now it's just like, I'm it like, had like an identity, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like the, it was sort of like the yeah, Everton, I was on a bit cringe, but the Everton way, weren't it? it was yeah, like, yeah, but that was massive growing up. Yeah. Through the ranks. The yeah. Everton, used, <laughs> that phrase, you'd hear it all the time. Yeah. yeah. We'd have like presentations every year at St. George's and it'd be like collages of the Everton way and how we do things and who our identity. Like that was heavy. Yeah. And Moise was like heavy on that. I think it's because he was there for such a sustained yeah, period of time. Yeah, yeah. But now, because we've been chopping, changing managers, yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like, I love it to work for Lampard, and that. I really would. Mm. And, like, I just, I don't know. I just like this season for me. If we finish 14th, that's probably a success. That's great. It's sad to say. Like, I, look, yeah. I, look, I, watched, like, I looked at the league because I've seen a few games and he pulled off a few wins. But then I looked at the league and it was like 18. I'm like, 17, yeah. is it? 17th. Yeah. But we've yeah. just been beat 3 0 by Bournemouth for the World Cup. And we got beaten the same week 4-1 Yeah, in the cup. Going no, on there. It's, <laughs> no. it's heavy, you know. It's like last last year, up, as it? Blues, you must have been... Like, that was... That was That's horrible. You was on the way, weren't you? To we, went to, we went to the Burnley one away. And we got beat. We got beat 2-1. 3-2. Yeah, yeah. yeah. three, three, two, two, and it was just like... Yeah. Oh. You're thinking like this, it could be... Yeah. Could be, yeah. Could be that, yeah. I, I thought it was curtains. Me, Did like, you? Yeah. That Palace game was probably a miracle. Yeah. Lad. But yeah, I don't know. That, that as I say, that era, like trying to get into that Everton team mm. was mental because the the ballers. Yeah. He only got in, all the young lads only got close because he was mad injury. He stuck here, do you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> like half the team was injured, so we all got dead close. Like Jose, uh, James Wallace, we were all travelling all the time with the first team. But like their team Cahill. Yeah. My That's favourite player, player, I'd say I'd yeah, play for Everton. Yeah. Yeah, baller. But even like the players like Tony Hibbert and Phil Neville, you, you wouldn't think much of them. They be the players you think, all right, one v one with them. Oh, yeah. yeah, but you get there, and you'd still be ballers. Solid you know I mean? pros, solid. Isn't it? Yeah, they just do the right things. Yeah, Leon Osman baller. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Underrated baller. Was really so like that team, and they, Osman wouldn't even get a game sometimes because uh-huh. he was just other players. Arteta. It's just like oh, like I'm I'm so good at the fact that like. We, we were a bit like last time we got into Europe, we were only like 16. Yeah, we were too young, yeah. Like 21 now. I'm like, oh, we got into Europe before I have fucking kids. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, when you put yeah. it like that, in yeah, it, like, as, a, as a proper fan, like, you were this close from the Champions League one year, weren't you? Yeah. yeah. And then at least we had Europa League runs where you could play, oh, mate, play Benfica one year. I conference one. Yeah. yeah. Lad, I was on the bench, yeah, we went to Benfica. We got roasted because we had loads of injuries. Oscar Cardozo. So, like, did he score a lot? Did he score twice Lad. or something? When I when you, if you go back to their Benfica's um, team, at Pablo Aymar, Aymar, yeah, yeah, Di Maria, yeah, Ramirez, <laughs> went to Chelsea, yeah, 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 David Luiz, yeah, Contrao, Fabio Contrao, yeah, yeah, Real Madrid, yeah. Cardoza, the other team, man, lad. Did we get beat at home against them as well? Two 0 yeah. that was five nil away. Away, yeah. I'm sitting on the on the bench, yeah. That was mad. They have like an eagle. 
that flies on the pitch before the game. Like, mm. The atmosphere was nuts. The ground's massive, massive too, isn't it? Yeah. There's a few young players playing. I think Jose might have got a game or he come off the bench like quite early on. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting there. I think that was one of the only times in my career where I didn't want to... <laughs> <laughs> Watching it, Benfica just <laughs> goal, <laughs> goal. <laughs> and like obviously there was loads of injury. The bench was short, and I think mm. a few players went down. I'm like, Moisey's like, come oh, on, oh, oh. like shit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's the level of it. Yeah. They were there, do you know what I mean? But I think, I think. The Premier League in the last five years has got got even better. It's not. It used to be top four, didn't it? Used to be top four. Now it's like now. top six. Top six. It? The top ten teams are like got good players, mate. Spend yeah. them big money. Do you know what I mean? So if you don't keep up or you don't buy right, you can get in trouble quite quick. It's been it's like, issue. It's like it? even like a year ago, you look at Newcastle. They seem dead and buried. They've had to take over, and now they're a team. Now I, I feel like Everton are miles away from that. Miles away. You just bought good players. You bought like they bought well, like Dan Bain. No one yeah. mentioned him, solid player, trip, yeah, model pro, won the league in Spain. Mm-hmm. Then you've got like that little bit of Bruno Mifiel playing for Brazil in the World Cup. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've got, to, you've got to buy right, haven't you? Everton. Yeah. Maybe not recently, but like a couple of years ago, like three, four years. Signings are fucking mad, man. Oh, it's, it's scary. Some of them, not like Davy Classen, we signed him. Didn't really get much of a chance. He's playing yeah. for Holland in the World Cup. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. why is he not cut it at We spent 45 million on a band who shall not be named. Well, I mean, a Gilfie, yeah. yeah. A Gilf. You know what I mean? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I, these, these are, like, I don't say anything about players because obviously I've played the level. They're yeah. obviously good players, like, but at that level, mm. you have to, you have to, you have to produce, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to produce. The, the game demands it. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I think Evan, I've struggled as of late, but we'll see. I think, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's, just, it's a bit of a shame, isn't it, really, yeah. from where they were. It's like even a fucking cup draw the other night, you're nice of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even have some false no. hope. <laughs> but, so what do you think? Do you think you just you'll stay you stay up? You should stay up. I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> no, honestly, like I don't know. I just what I, I all I want is the last six weeks of the season not to be sat there like having sleepless nights again. That was all of the last year. I hope they're just on the beach by then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The only thing that I think that might save us this season is like the centre half, Cody solid, Tarkowski. Yeah. Yeah. Tarkowski goes solid. Like Pickford's always he's a L class keeper, any yeah. Pickford like. So where's the where do you think's the weak? Because even Awobi's playing play, he's been yeah. playing well, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just going forward, we have not we often we don't often often do we? It's because the Mope is not great and then Calvert Lewin's literally uh, Calvert Lewin's like already injured in his head, I think, a lot of the time. Mm. Like he's injured so much right? and it's sly on him. But he just, he's just never going to be true, true. that fit to like. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's hard when you, when you have injuries. I've been there a little bit, but yeah, as fans, you expect, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's number nine, isn't he? You want him mm, to be. Yeah. As a player, yeah, do you know if you've had like, a few like injuries? Yeah. You're always thinking about it. Do you I have like, a split second where you think, oh, another challenge going in, and you're like, oh. Yeah, I, I, had a, I had a weird injury all my career. Like, when I was at Redden, I dislocated my shoulder. Mm. Playing for Nigeria, actually. Um, just a freak accident popped out. You're playing Congo or something somewhere mad. Um, and getting road to hospital like in some it felt like, it felt like a wheelbarrow. This <laughs> <laughs> so my shoulders out and I'm bumping around along the road. I'm thinking, oh, what's going on here? Gets to like a hospital and like they couldn't get it back in, so they had to put me to sleep. So oh my god! To so put me to sleep and I'm like I'm dozing off and I can just hear them arguing in French like. Like hostile, I'm thinking, fucking, I just, I was like, God, just let me wake up with my arm, do you know what I mean? It's just dislocated, <laughs> like, just put it back in. Just don't chop it, don't do nothing, man, do you know what I mean? But um, I struggled with that for my career, I had surgery, got back, but was always like, you know, playing in midfield, you have to have eyes in the back of your head, and I was always wary that I was going to fall and it was going to happen again, and it did happen again, happened at Bradford, and this time I didn't have surgery, so like, <laughs> every two games, <laughs> halfway through the game, I'd have a fall, shoulder <laughs> slides out. Oh. I have to pop it back in, and like for ten minutes, I'd be running around like in agony. And then the adrenaline in the game, you just sort of get through. But then for the next two games, you like half the ah, you couldn't couldn't run. I used to wear a big sling, but yeah. I couldn't play in it, so I take it off, risk it. I used to strap it up massively, couldn't like run properly, so it affected me massively. So it does injuries do play the part. Yeah, yeah. 
So sometimes is watching the game from the from the sidelines, you don't you don't see it or you don't understand it, but it does play a big part sometimes. Yeah. Someone's had like a reoccurring injury, it does mm. play on the mind I and mean, it does affect them. It does yeah. affect them. For you, who's the goat? The goat in football? Yeah. Well, all over. Yeah. It's messy, isn't it? Gotta be. Yeah, and yeah. Messi, yeah. I, I, I'd say Messi, you, you're going out. Nah, I'm not no more. He asked me, I don't know. Oh, that interview was mental, wasn't it? What you I think it, it was like a game to save me life. Yeah. And I needed, and I'm going to build a team. <laughs> Money. Ronaldo's in it. Like Ronaldo's in it. I think big game, obviously, Messi's a big game player. That's just yeah. stupid, but yeah. like. I think know, we just Messi for the, the pure. I mean, to be fair, Messi's like more. Bro, the old Ronaldo for like the purity of football. Mm. When football was football. Mm. But like, just like consistency and like just magical moments. He's just a machine, isn't he, Cristiano? Cristiano's a machine. Haaland's a bit like that. Yeah. But then Mbappe, he's more of like similar to, not similar to Messi, but he's got a bit more skill. And yeah. A little bit. He's still a machine, I think. Mbappe, compared to him, Messi's like, a magi- he's like, it's not football. Yeah. It's like, mm. he's doing his own thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You watch, mm. you watch slow mo's of Messi. He's like still normal speed. And everyone's the balance, like, I think, is mad. It's, it's like. nuts. So I'd say I'd say Messi if I had to choose. Defo. Yeah. yeah, top shot. Messi. Did you have any superstitions as a footballer? No, I, I didn't. You know, I, I um, I used to like there's certain things, routine things that you do, but I didn't rely on those because I think sometimes you try them and then it wouldn't work, and then you blame that. You just get confused. For me, yeah. So I just used to try and prepare the same way. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was a superstition, but you just do the same thing, same yeah. process. Um, but I found every game was different. Sometimes yeah. you'd feel like shit or you didn't feel right and then you'd have a blinder. Sometimes you go into a game, I'm tip top form and it just wouldn't go for you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So superstition just went off the window yeah. for me. Did you ever get any like informs on FIFA or anything? <laughs> informs on FIFA or anything? You have to clear me up on that, mate. What's that? A t- team of the week on FIFA? Do you not play it? I haven't played FIFA for years, you know. People <laughs> send me them. Yeah. And send me like... <laughs> Like you get like our oh, footy manager, oh, I made you. You're this fucking mad player, <laughs> you know, footy manager. And, um, you, you, you get sent them by by fans and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But I don't play FIFA because you know what? I, some of my mates, heavy gamers, you know. And like you go around casually, but you just you get nowhere. I do just class, mate. You know? <laughs> so I just give up. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you got any more questions, Luke? Um, no. Yeah, actually, um, if you had to give a piece of advice to um, you at like eighteen. What would it be? Oh, it's hard. It's hard, especially at that age, because you've got you've got so many voices, so many. You've got other players, you've got coaches telling you to do this. You got your family in the back saying, "Oh, you need to do this." Um, but I think from me being in football, the difference makers. It's all about self confidence, man. Like no matter what, you've got to have that self belief that you're gonna, you're gonna make it. You're gonna, you're gonna score that goal. You're gonna be the best player. You have to have that self belief. The players that I've seen coming through young ages, they always had that self belief from early. Like no matter what you said, no matter what happened, like Shane Duffy, you know Shane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's an example I use all the time. Him and Ross Barkley, like they're not the brightest lads in the world, right? But they just always had super self confidence. Like, no matter what happened, yeah. Shane Duffy used to, he, just, he was a mad, he was a character. So, we had crazy, he had that crazy injury at Everton. And then he died, didn't he? And then he died. But then he'd come back and he'd still be like diving in for headers and yeah. fucking mad, mad tackles, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He'd get end up in mad situations. He, was, he used to like a drink, Shane. <laughs> there was a time, but sometimes I think at Blackburn, he was about to get a move I mean his head had gone a little bit. So we didn't see him for like a week. He was just on a mad one. <laughs> honestly, yeah. But then I think he come back, he played, he scored an own goal one game, an own goal the next game. But then the next game we had a game on TV and he, sc- he scored a mad, a mad, like he had a blind and got man of the match. So he's, no matter what happened, he always had that self-confidence. Yeah. And I think that sets players apart sometimes, just having that inner self-belief, or no matter what, no matter how bad it's going, no matter whether the crowd's on your back, bad form you can always pull out the bad because you got that self-belief that's what the, the better players always had from yeah. from 16 17 18 Jose had it um, Ross Barkley I mean he 
was playing with he was like thirteen playing under eighteen, do you know what I mean? You mm. can see from then. Yeah. But he just had confidence. He went asked. Yeah. He didn't care what anyone said. He just play his way. Yeah. And he just knew that he's got ability, I'm gonna show it. Mm. And that's that's probably the advice I'd I'd give. Self belief and just it's cliches in it, but just knuckle down, like yeah. yeah. Football's a short career. Mm. Like he, looking back now, it goes in the blink of an eye, do you know what I mean? So just like if you get opportunities, take them. Like don't don't hold back. Focus, like forget everything else for a little yeah. bit, do you know what I mean? Especially where we're from, Liverpool, like it's like a tight bubble in it. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone knows everyone. Everyone's like, ah, oh, we live for the weekend, you know, where we used to it used to be heavy that way. Mm. Don't know what it's like now. Social media might be a bit different. But Definitely for me. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. what do you mean? First, first paint on a Friday. There you go. So it was always like that. It was always a like Saturday, Saturday night. Where are we going? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Which wasn't the best, the best thing. But <laughs> I feel like if you want to want to get the best out of yourself, you just got to like focus on you, stay clear, have a tunnel vision, have goals, and go for it. That's yeah. that's what I'd say. Yeah. Self belief the key. Yeah. And also, what's your favorite paint? I'm not a pint drinker, you know. I'm not a pint drinker at all. What, I'm oh. more a, a Di Serrano. Darker, darker, nice, darker, nice. A Di Serrano sounds me say. Serrano. Di Serrano and Coke. Dark rum, Coke, yeah. yeah. Rum and Coke, yeah. I'm more of a spirits guy, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. The beer one, it's not for me. I feel a bit heavy on the beers, you know. <laughs> um, can I have a cold beer or a lot of the lads. We used to go on Christmas do's in Ireland a lot of the time. So they love a Guinness. Yeah. yeah. So a Guinness with a bit of black currant on top, I can I can handle. Yeah. I mean, that's a good drink. Stiff drink, innit? Yeah. 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 It's, it's like, well, nice one for coming on. Yeah, that's been Boston. Yeah. And um, if you've liked what you've seen, don't forget to like and subscribe. And also give us a five star review on Spotify. And go to Plant Boost as well. Yeah, Plant yeah. Boost. That's <laughs> the place. <laughs>